Sometimes you have to do something unforgivable just to be able to go on living. Well, some friends of mine pointed out that the first film I ever did was a seven-minute short called Transfer, and it was about a psychiatrist and his patient. That was the very first film I did 40 years ago. So um, obviously I've been interested in that very new relationship that was invented by Freud, which is the relationship between a psychoanalyst and his patient. You know, it's a very unique, strange relationship when you think of it. We take it for granted now, but you, you come to a stranger, you don't know him, and then you tell him the most intimate things about your sex life, about your dreams, about your family relationships, and so on. And then there's a kind of a clinical detachment. Sex. Male. Family. Child. Divorce. No. And yet there's the complication of transference, which is the moment when the patient begins to project onto the analyst's emotions that he feels for other people. Um, very, really quite intriguing, and obviously since the first movie I made was about that, this feels like coming full circle. Um, I must say that I, I, when I read Christopher's play, and I've never seen it performed, I wasn't really looking for a movie, I was just curious about the play, and I knew Christopher's work and so on. And, uh, but then when I read it, I thought, here's a beautiful dramatic structure that you could use to explore uh, Freud's life and the birth of psychoanalysis and that really intriguing moment of uh, Euro European history just before the First World War. Well, uh, Vigo is an intellectual, that's the thing. I mean, I know him well because we've done two movies before this movie. And uh, he's a poet, he's a, a, a musician, a composer, a writer, uh, he's a publisher, publish, has a publishing company. Uh, so I know uh, that, that aspect of it, the, the Vigo's intellect for me was never in question. I know that he's not just a physical macho guy, even though of course he can play that kind of role. Um, uh, but even though I love Vigo, you know, it, it, you don't do an actor a favor by miscasting him. And if I hadn't thought that he was absolutely the best guy to play so Freud, our Freud, uh, I wouldn't have cast him. Um, he was re reluctant at first because he, he wasn't sure that, you know, it's not obvious, you say Viggo Mortensen plays Sigmund Freud. Um, but I pointed out to him that the Freud in the movie is not the 80-year-old grandfatherly, sort of sickly, stern-looking Freud. This is Freud at the age of 50, very virile, very handsome, very charismatic. And, and uh, very tough because he felt that this thing that he invented, psychoanalysis, was under attack from many places and, and so he had to be very strong and hold this group together. So when you start to think of the character Freud that way, at that period in his life, then suddenly Vigo makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Well, Jung, in many ways, was uh, uh, ex very much like Freud. That is to say, he was very intellectual, very strong in his uh, thinking. He also a very handsome and charismatic man, and uh, um, very deeply cultured, as was Freud. They both were very interested in ancient cultures and ancient religions, ancient, ancient art, and not just Greek and Roman, but Persian and beyond. And they, were, they had a very deep understanding of these things. So when they meet in the movie and in real life, the first meeting took, they, they talked for 13 hours nonstop um, because they were so, they felt they had met a brother, you know, someone equal. They both had great passion for their ideas. Professor Freud, I'm Dr. Jung. I've simply opened the door. It's for the young men like yourself to walk through it. All of the people in this movie and in real life, uh, were very passionate about their ideas. They, they were, those weren't just abstract ideas that you just think about. They wanted to incorporate them into their lives. They really felt that these ideas, this new psychoanalysis, could help you to live a, a better life, to find a better way to live your life than, than the way that was uh, uh, sort of the norm at that time. It was a very repressive era. People were very controlled. They dressed in a very controlled way, with high, stiff white collars, and 
and uh, everybody knew his place in society and everything seemed to be very rational and reasonable and solid. And here was Freud saying, not so fast, you know, this, this cannot last. You, we, we have under the surface, under this sort of accepted version of reality, the official version of reality, there are forces in humans that are, can be very destructive, can be very uh, violent, and we need to acknowledge these so that we can control them. And of course, the, when the Great War, the First World War happened, that proved him to be completely correct. <laughs> Actually, when I make a movie, it's as though my other movies don't exist. I mean, they mean nothing to me. They, they, they have no relevance when I'm making this movie. And I've made movies like M. Butterfly, for example, and uh, Dead Ringers and Spider, which are not, you know, I made early horror films. Um, I, I still have great affection for them, but they have nothing to do with this movie. You know, each movie is a, a unique project and you listen to the movie, you give the movie what it wants. It will tell you what it needs. So in this movie, for example, um, I'm trying to deliver us into an er a different time where there was, a, 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 as I say, this very controlled kind of society. Uh, you can tell by their clothes, by the architecture, what kind of culture it was. And uh, so th that really dictates the style of the movie. I don't impose on it something some other idea from some other movie. That would be, you would destroy the movie if you did that. Mm -hmm.